Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, it's the season finale we all been waiting for. Yeah. Because we indeed love this show, but sometimes we need a freaking break. Yeah. So I'm so glad that the finale is here, but I am happy to announce that today we just got the news that we've been renewed for another freaking season. Yeah. So I'm so happy about it because I was scared. Five. I was scared because last night's finale kind of felt finale-ish to me. Yeah. Uh, we kind of we ended how we began. But let's go ahead and get into a Queen Sugar um, season four, episode thirteen. I am. You all know. Let's do the YouTube thing to get that out the way. If you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free ninety nine. Thumbs up or thumbs down the video. At this point, it doesn't even matter. You've already been counted. And for yeah. you all soldiers that come back every week, y'all know we thank you. We appreciate you all, and we can't wait to get into it down in the comments. All right. Yeah. So, like I said, it did feel final. So I'm glad that we did get renewed for another season. So starting off, Micah. Micah and his mom are kind of in this strange place. They met in the kitchen and she was like, you have one of those sandwiches for me? And he gave her a sandwich and they were able to talk through what had happened over there at his party, his going Man. away party. He apologized for the way that he sprung that on her as you should, because that was bucked up Micah. Yeah. You should have had a conversation with her beforehand or you should have just played it off let you just celebrate the party and then tell your mama afterwards because that was embarrassing and then you should have gave him back that watch oh he ain't finna get that rolling back now he should have you wouldn't get a rolling back she need to take it <laughs> that rolling was for harvard not for you to stay in new orleans i'm just saying i'm just saying michael get a watch back Get a watch back. You going over that target? Get you a nice watch. If if you decide you didn't want to go where your mama wanted you to go, but he said that um he's gonna take his advantages that he has in life and he's gonna use them down in New Orleans and he's gonna do great things. Yeah, and we dig. believe him. Uh, yeah, I can dig. Yeah, I can dig. I mean, can't do nothing but respect it. That's right. So in true Queen Sugar fashion, before Charlie could even go upstairs, good and change and put on her PJs. There's a knock on the door. Yeah. That knock of we mean business is either somebody's sick, somebody been in a car accident, or somebody about to get arrested. Or oh, your cousin. Or your cousin. Yeah. That, that just got out of jail. <laughs> well, it's the people. Y'all know they've been bucking with Charlie about this day going fire at the Queen Sugar Mill. Well, now they are trying to pin that on Charlie. So Charlie gets locked up. So then there's the family. The family is down there at the um, at the police department. And we're waiting for Charlie to um, post bail and mm -hmm. get him out of there. But in the meantime, we have old Ralph Angel. Hot-headed Ralph Angel. Wow. Ralph Angel that causes a scene, can't keep control of his emotions, outbursting in this place. It's wow. racism. They did this and they don't right, stop Ralph, going. Will you calm down, bruh? You about to get locked up yep, again. Yep. And that's what they want. And you the face of the second chance program down at the police station acting a fool. I said, okay, you gonna get arrested for disorderly conduct. Yeah, you were saying the right stuff, but in the wrong place. Wrong place. Wrong place. So eventually, Charlie did get out. And Charlie was like, don't even worry about it. I know what this is all about. My lawyer's gonna take care of it. This stuff gonna be deaded in the morning. Oh, press out there. You got a compact? Let me fix my profile. Let's do this. Yeah, that's how that's how the black women do it. Y'all ain't fitting to be on camera looking any kind of way. No. <laughs> so I get this right. You ain't gonna say nothing about the way I look on the camera. Hello. Yeah. So she, you know how in true Charlie fashion, she marches her tail down them steps and she was ready for those cameras. Mm -hmm. And she told him, she said, listen here and listen to me good. When you come for the people of St. Joe, you better come correct and you better not miss. Yeah. And you just missed. I said, just put a B on the end of that. That B on the end of that would have been so powerful. You just missed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, mm -hmm. And Char Charlie know how to give a powerful speech now, boy. She know how to talk. Mm -hmm. and, yes, while, and while we have that camera rolling, she was like, oh, and I'm fully aware of what's going on with the purging of the voters from the voter roll. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Have a good day. And oh, I'm innocent. You mean to tell me you're innocent? Yes, I'm innocent. But you know what though? Even though she said that, yeah. when, when they go and put it on the news, they're going to edit that part right on out. Of course. Yeah, they're going to. And the only thing they have on her is her fingerprints on a torch. Yeah. Why would yeah. her fingerprints be on the torch? Yeah, I mean, it's she for a meal. Exactly. Just like if, if something was happening, God forbid something happened in this house. Oh, your fingerprints was on the stove. God darn it, I use the stove every day. I cook here. <laughs> I live here. And so now we have Hollywood and Aunt Vi. They're having a little moment. You know, he's over there cooking wings. He's telling her he's like the only one that could bring the food up in here. I got this. So he was like, try these wings. I said, them wings was looking good. Yeah, Maybe because I was on relax. Like, See, I ain't gonna call him call them Buffalo Wild Wings. Hollywood Wild Wings. <laughs> them do look good, boy. He won't cook in a thing. He would just move them around in that pan because it won't nail a bit of steam coming from there. Nope. But, um... He's asking Aunt Vi, he was like, you know, you think I really should um, start that place, you know, where we support men and they're able to get together and, you know, just hash out what they're going through and whatnot. And she was like, I, if that's what you want to do, I just want to see you happy. I said, Hollywood, now what we not going to do, yeah. black people, this is us talking. For my white people that come over here every week, just do like that. Yeah. Um, what we not going to do is when... The rubber has met the road. We come up with these great ideas and these big plans of how we're going to make things better. You go to the doctor. They done told you your sugar up. Yeah. They don't, you done went there, your blood pressure up. Mm -hmm. Your family ain't right. We about to go to counseling. We about to go to therapy. We about to start going to church. <laughs> we about to do all the things that's going to make the, situ the current situation better. better. But then when the situation starts getting better on its own without you implementing any of those things that you talked about, you all of a sudden... You renege on you, all your promises, bro. It ain't necessary to do that no more. Yeah. So your, your we sugar's good up. Now. We good now. We good now. Your sugar's up, but you're still drinking Kool-Aid. Yeah. Your blood pressure up, but you're still eating beef. The eat Lord bagel. came through. The Lord came through, so I'm good, man. <laughs> Stop that, y'all. Keep going. With the original plan, even when things seem to get a little bad. Yeah. Okay. Now white people do like this. We good. You, you can hear us now. And we talking to ourselves too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't look. One finger pointing at you, and yeah. all these pointing back, right back at you. Yep. So, Vi, y'all know she had called in that favor for Sam Landry because we were like, what does Aunt Vi have on Sam Landry? Where one, she's even able to talk to him in a way that makes him listen and obey to her. Yeah. What happened here? Well, the pissed off cat <laughs> comes over to Aunt Vi's and she's pissed off because she said, you don't see all this that's going down? I called in that favor. Why is your favor delayed? Up. Yeah. He said, no, I had to let some things play out so that we can have an airtight case. I, I know how it looks, but I have what you need to take my sister Frances down. I said, oh, so you mm. just going to turn that over to Aunt Vi, just like Mike B said. Yeah, oh, willy really nilly. nilly. <laughs> I really didn't say it. <laughs> that's, that's what you're doing. Um, and, but why? Yeah. So he turns over the documents to her and whatnot. She's going through them. And she's like, oh, wow. Oh, mm. oh, okay. That's all some good stuff here. Yeah. Um, and then he begins to ask about Betty. When the last time you spoke to Betty? I said, ah, it's been a minute. You know, it's probably been about 10, 15 years. Last time, you know, I spoke to her. And then he was like, you know, what about this daughter? And that's when I was like, I was like, what daughter? Long story short, Sam Landry had a love of his life. The way yeah. his whole demeanor changed when he started talking about Betty and this whole situation. And Sam Landry used to creep around with this woman, Betty. Yeah. And his daddy found out about it. And the only way that that girl got out alive and Sam Landry was Vi got her up out of there. And then they came up with this elaborate lie to make it look like it wasn't what it was. So that Sam Landry could still pretty much survive his family. That his sister wouldn't know what was going on. So she could rat him out to the family. Because the family would have cut him off. Yep. If they knew about this relationship. Well, out of this relationship came a daughter. Yeah. This daughter has graduated from Spelman. And then she went off to another college and graduated from there. 
I said, oh, oh, okay. So we got us a real one on our hands here. Yeah. But Sam Landry said he's never been in her life. So I vibe was like, well, now that you know better, why don't you, you do, do better? better. Yep. You know, and he said, you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I will reach out to them. Sound real, real good. Yeah, real good right now. But, it, but what did, what's the real deal here? Uh huh. I said, okay, this is gonna come up, come into play a little later. And boy, did it. Yeah. You get me? Shocked the hell out of me. So now that we're waiting for all these votes to come in, everybody is over at um on the Vibe's place. And you know how we do the watch parties. We're waiting. We're looking at the polls and we're looking at the votes coming in from the districts and all of that good stuff. And it, it looked a little crazy. At one point, we was on the down three percent. Oh, down three percent, and whatnot. But yeah. before we had got there, that's when Vi had presented all of this information to Nova and Charlotte. So of course we know that whatever information that was turned up, and we know what the information was. Y'all know what it was too if y'all watched it. This lady paid people to burn down the mill. Yep. She paid all these people to do all this crazy stuff. All the stuff that Charlie and the family has been going through, Francis has paid people to do it. They have the invoices matching up with the with the deposits. They got they don't even tap into the woman email server. See, did all of that. See, see, Francis won't no true thug or a true hitter. Who hits or you know plans a hit and leave a paper trail, man? Uh, well, they, you, they you printed need, it. You need the you need to slide the cash underneath the table. She you can't owed. leave the paper trail. Is that a she old? Oh, old people is the same people that put a twenty dollar bill in the mail and a piece of loose leaf paper. That's and what put I'm it saying. In the envelope. That's why she should have got her little nephew to put this out. She would be like, Grandma, cash you don't, up. <laughs> yeah, you don't leave a paper trail. Yeah. Well, with that information, we know that Charlie used that information to pretty much get a lead into this um this campaign. Yeah. And she eventually did win this campaign. And I said, whoo, I was yeah, we scared. Gotta win, man. But I said, Black Excellence, we got us a win. If you're interested in these t-shirts, go ahead and look at the link below. Yeah. And bless your life. So while we were waiting, let me back up a little bit. While we were waiting for those votes to come in and whatnot, this is the first time that Calvin gets to meet the family. Yeah. He was a little nervous, though. He should have. Been. I would have been nervous. Um, I said, I've read, I mean, I've heard so much about <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Charlie, she was really happy to, to meet Calvin. Ralph and Jay ain't had time for neither one of them, um, mm -hmm. their booze, because he's not talking to his sister Nova, so he definitely ain't got time for Calvin. And Michael, he side eyed the hell out of Calvin, but he he kind of warmed up to him in um, a little while. So all of them are there, dollars the there, you know, they all celebrating when Charlie won the election, so we have a councilwoman on our hands. I said, Where's Miss Genevieve at? Yeah. Where's she at, y'all? I, I miss Miss Genevieve. I, I need to. See. She worked hard on this campaign. You mean tell me she didn't win? They couldn't afford to pay her this episode, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> this is on their own network. You got the money. <laughs> oh, you got it. Ooh. Oh, you got that money. Okay, so now that Charlie has won the seat, it's time for her to face off with Miss Ruby Woo herself. Hey. So Charlie walks into this restaurant and she had on a Black, I yeah, black suit. I said, Charlie, Charlie, you bet to work that suit. You hear uh, me? And she walked up in there and she sat down with Miss Ruby Woo. And Miss Ruby Woo was like, um, trying to downplay her success. Yeah, you know, my son was never really into politics. Like, no, no, shut, shut the fuck up. No, he <laughs> lost. He lost. He lost fair and square. When y'all tried to cheat. He still lost. Mm. So then here she is. Well, being that you have the seat now, maybe we can work together. And maybe you can get some of the things that you would want as well. As if to tell Charlie, you may be taking the seat, but I still run skid around here. Yeah. Charlie says, you know what? I ain't <laughs> even been sworn in yet. And now you're trying to bribe me. Sitting right here in this restaurant in public, you trying to bribe me? She said, honey, you are a dead woman walking. Miss Ruby Wu was like, what you mean by that? She said, honey, the two guys that you paid to burn down my mill? Uh -huh. Oh, they confessed this morning. 
I said, oh, did they? Oh, yeah. I said, a whole lot happened overnight. Yep. She said, um, yeah, they confessed. She and, I don't um, know what you're talking about. And said, in any minute now, they going to come to lock your god door tail up as well. And on cue, the boys in the suits with the handcuffs come when they told her she was under arrest. And the man was getting ready to put the handcuffs on Miss Ruby Wu and she said, you better not put those things on me. I was like, wait a minute. I know y'all ain't fitting to listen to her. And he said. And put them right back in his pocket. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, wait, 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 wait. Ain't it good because to have options these days that we don't have? Yeah. Melanated people, we don't you have. You put the handcuffs on Charlie and took her down to the prison. You put the goddamn handcuffs on her too. I said, what? And she said, if you know what's good for you. I said, oh, so even though she gonna get locked up, we know she about to be out real soon. Yeah. Cause they didn't even lock her up properly. Exactly. I said, is nobody recording this? Somebody get your phones out. Sam Landry laid in the cut looking like. Uh-huh. I said, so yeah. you ain't gonna. Got him. Uh -huh. Did she even see him? I don't know oh, if she, she saw him or not. Yeah. But I said, okay, you look real guilty right now. Yeah, I'm like, why is you pale? At least be um, at least be dramatic like black people do when something happens. Oh my oh, god, my don't sister. Don't oh. you ever lie. Y'all leave my sister alone. Get your hands on my sister. <laughs> um, look, don't you touch my sister. I told you. Throw a glass or something. Oh, God, I told you. Get your hands off my sister. <laughs> I mean, at least play it off, Sam. He was there looking like, right. yeah. Take the trash out. Got him. Mm -hmm. Got him. I said, this is way too much. <laughs> so, um, now my mouth is dry. Uh, uh, uh. So, Ralph Angel and Darla. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I know y'all think I'm gonna be petty. I'm not. When Dolla is doing good, I give her credit. Yeah. And Dolla looks daggone good. Yeah, she do. I was like, it took Dolla to have a relapse for her to look, look good. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Like, cause Dolla always has this woe with me. Mm -hmm. I'm just barely making it. Can I have blue for the weekend disposition? No, this chick looks happy. She yep. looks alive. Revived, she, refreshed. Yeah. And that's how yeah. I want her to look. Yeah. And she comes over to the farm and she tells Ralph Angel, she was like, you know, the whole purpose of her coming over there was that gift that they have found that was from Papa, they want to give it to Blue. Mm -hmm. But while she's there, she told Ralph Angel, I want to cook for you as an appreciation for everything you've done for me. I want to cook for you, I said. We know how this gonna go. Uh huh. You know when you start cooking for men, that's romantical yeah. and that's very intimate. Yeah. And and then do something to him. Do something yeah, to him. Yeah, man. Wait a man's heart is through his stomach. It really is. If you can cook, <laughs> let me put that in there. <laughs> yeah. So they ended up having this conversation, and I'm gonna go backwards a little bit. They end up having this conversation about. Some of the things that Ralph Angel said to her and some of the things she said to Ralph Angel. And at the end of the day, they have decided that they want to take a try at this relationship thing. And I was like, all right, y'all deserve each other. Yeah. So, Blue. They sat Blue down and they presented him with this box. And he was like, hold on, it's not my birthday. <laughs> yeah. So why do I have a gift? It's not my birthday. And they said it's his from Papa. <laughs> Papa, ain't this motherfucker dead? <laughs> he giving gifts from heaven. What's going on? Boy? You gotta explain that to kids. Um, you just can't give them a box yeah. and say that's from your papa now. Yeah, you gotta be like, we, you know, we found this gift that's from Papa out the gate. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But they, anyway, they, they found that big old box and never had seen it before. And how long Papa been dead? A couple years? Well, Sorry. I don't know. How I don't know. We, at least a year. He been gone for a long time. Let's put it that way. <laughs> for you not to see that whole box up okay. there. I mean, just I'm just sitting right there. Okay, whatever. So, <laughs> Blue opens the box. And somebody in the comments a few weeks ago had asked me what did I think was in the box. I said, well, you know, Papa was an old-fashioned kind of guy. I said, so yeah. maybe he gave Blue a truck. Yeah, like a big old motor control truck or oh, something like that. Oh, a Tonka truck. Yes. Man, y'all remember those Tonka trucks? Yes, indeed. Them motherfuckers that was metal. Uh-huh. That if you hit 
And we used to fight each other with them jokes too, man. That what I'm trying to say. They can throw that Tonka truck at you. I got a mark on my knee right now that came from that Tonka truck. Uh-huh. Man. I thought it was going to be a Tonka truck, y'all. It's it's a Dollar Tree beach ball in a $5 box. Like what? Papa. Papa. <laughs> and it's still inflated to the brim like it ain't went down at all. Now, we're not playing these kind of games, but we're going to play along. We are gonna play right a frick along. I'm like, they come, they come in a flat package. You could have wrapped up the flat package. That means you took it out the pack, blew it up, put it in the big deck box to make him think he got a big present. <laughs> if that ain't some black skin, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Christmas gift a big old box you get it like uh why did you do you, this? You don't want to be disrespectful and your head was like, why in the hell did you put this small thing in this big cotton box? You could have left this. You flat. spent more money on the box than you did on the press. <laughs> I said, Papa, come on down. <laughs> did you get this boy a goddamn beach ball from the Dollar Tree in a five dollar box? <laughs> And I said, please dig down in that box. It got to be something Bro. else in this box. I hate to talk about the dead, but it's got to be more in this box. Then this guy no <laughs> beach ball, I'm offended. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's blowing all the way up. And then it had never be one of them old school <laughs> beach balls with the red, blue, green. <laughs> Not even the current beach ball. Oh, shoot. Sure. Oh, stop it. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was on a fixed income. And hey, the least, farm won't do a good snap. Least, he at least should have got him a freaking slip and slide or something. <laughs> no, he ain't had no money because that's why he's trying to get in touch with Charlie so she can fix the books around that. The price he paid for the box is the price of the slip and slide. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, oh, you know he had that box from a gift somebody gave him for Christmas. Exactly, yep. Because my mama back there. She ain't here, she no. Nah, she ain't here. My mama would keep bags and boxes. And every time I get a gift, it'll be like, happy birthday, Cindy. <laughs> happy birthday, D. Uh. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Stylin. <laughs> like, mama, at least take the tag off the goddamn gift, uh -huh. off the box. <laughs> she don't care. Then when you, when you open it up, hey, go on, give me that bag <laughs> back. <laughs> Put that bag in the bag. bag back. Take your freaking nasty bag <laughs> back. Give my goddamn gift. Woo. <laughs> I don't know how we end up down there. I don't know, but I did that half. So, pop, really? Uh huh. And the and the beach ball is still flated. Hmm. All these years, let's just let's just play into the cameras. Yeah, we got it. That yeah. Ralph Angels went in the book in the, in the gift, and he saw that it had deflated, and he went on and blew it back up and wrapped it back up. He blew it up. <laughs> he blew it. He blew it up for blue. He blew it up for blue. So uh. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's go on to Nova. Nova comes over here to the farm, right? Ross still ain't bucket with him. Mm -hmm. He's I, standing out. Then I tell you not come right here no more, no. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I can't. I can't stay away from the farm. And I know why. So she has this conversation with Ralph Angel about his mom, their mama's journal that they that she got from what's the cousin's name? Martha. Yeah, Martha. Cousin yeah. Martha. He said, I ain't never heard of no cousin Martha. But when she presented the journal to him, it's in mama's handwriting. You can't deny it. Mm -hmm. And all of the things that were personable to her and all of the things that he remembers of her is in this journal. So he knows it's legit. And, um, you know, um, she was saying, mama is out here on this land, Ralph. He's and like, he was nah, like, no, nah, nah. mama is not out there. She was like, it was a gift to our father that she ended up wanting to be buried here, but she didn't want anyone to know because she didn't want anybody to feel like they had to be tied to this land because she was there. Yeah. So they're going through the book and, you know, um, Ralph Angel saw his angel cream, Ralph Angel, angel cream. Mm -hmm. And his mother used to make this cream out of this, um, this flower, one of her favorite flowers, and she used to rub it on him where he would get all scraped up and da-da-da-da-da. So he's having a whole moment because she's writing and beside everything that she wrote, she wrote little notes and, you know, admiration for her children. 
and the relationship that they had with each other. <clears throat> and this was how Nova was able. This is how Miss <laughs> Nova was able to manipulate her brother. Because this didn't have anything to do with you. This had everything to do with you wanting to be on that land mm -hmm. to reveal to your brother that mama is out there. That's cool. I agree. You should have mm -hmm. done that. But why you got to read all that stuff at the bottom? Talking about some rap angel you see right you here. You ain't to read that right there. As if he can't read. Well, he probably can. Oh. But, um... Right here it says, Ralph Angel follows Nova everywhere she goes. He just adores him. And um, she protects him. She's, and so, their bond. She's, so, she's so gentle with him. And their I said until she wrote that book. book. Yeah. So, with all of that information, he... He softened up. Because he's a, you know, he's easily manipulated, y'all. <laughs> so that's how their relationship was able to be smoothed over. But now the million dollar question is, where is our mother? And Ralph Angel was like, you know, that flower right here is on this farm. Yeah, I have said, seen, I've seen it a few times. And she was like, where? And he was like, I couldn't tell Jay, you where yeah, it is. Because that's a yeah. lot of land. Yeah. He said, like, I've seen it. And he said, you know, and then uh, I think it was Nova that said she had an idea of how they was going to find out with flower. And I said, y'all got a drone? <laughs> that means let's let's drone it up so we can see where these flowers at. Well, no, they ended up going over there and they talked to uh, Mr. Prosper. Mr. Prosper. And they asked Mr. Prosper. They was like, you know, like I got some questions to ask you. Remember when we talked about my book and you talked about how Daddy used to walk the land when he was depressed and you used to walk up on him and he was talking to himself. <laughs> and Prosper was like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, old people don't like for you to try to make them seem like they crazy. So what you're not going to do is talk about his friend as if he crazy. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with my friend. He was just having a moment. moment yeah. And he was just talking we just to himself to a talk. <laughs> We just walked we just walked the cave fields until he felt bad. And they was like, no, 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 no. We're not saying anything like that. <laughs> um, our mama is buried out there. He was like, right. truly? Is buried out there on the land? And he was like, yeah. And basically, you know how the conversation probably went. Then, but if you I, could find follow the flower, where was this area at that he was always talking to himself? But so of course, he was able to tell him. But it's still kind of hard to believe that he didn't tell Prosper that. Oh, and, people, man. Or, or unless you know, he told he was swore, sworn to secrecy that you don't ever tell it. So, if that's the case, kudos to you, Prosper, man. Yeah, because he could have been like, yeah, your daddy told me that. It, it was it was a lot. Yeah. And I was like, wow, what are we going to do with this information here? Like, and we know now we can't let no highway come through that now. Yeah. Trudy's out there. Papa's out there. Mm hmm And then I had forgot all about Blue's Corner, to be honest with yeah, you. I did too, yeah. But the, where they were, <clears throat> well, we'll get to it. But it's over there with Blue's Corner, y'all. Yeah. So, okay. When Charlie was over there having that little, first of all, Miss Ruby Wu, when Charlie had came over there to meet her for lunch, she said, I took it upon myself to order you some iced tea. I said, Charlie, don't, don't you drink, drink that tea. Uh-huh. She went to put up to a mouth, but I'm not sure she drank She didn't drink it. I, I, said, I watched closely. Like, don't <laughs> you drink it. I said, Charlie, you don't do that. Yeah. You tell him to bring you a can and don't pop it in the back. Pop it in front of me. Hmm. So, before she was able to leave, Charlie gets that text message from Parker Campbell. Mm-hmm. Want to meet with her. I said, ooh, it's about to get real up there in here. She don't, she don't want this election. And now Skip about to hit the god darn fan. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, she ends up going into this complex and walking past many doors. And she ended up in an office. There's a guy sitting at the desk that we assume is Parker. Yep. Mr. Parker Campbell. And she was like, hmm, Parker Campbell. Finally get to meet you. And a woman turns around and was like, yes, I'll be I'll with, with you, you in a moment. I said, oh, oh shit. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait said, a minute. I said, did, 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 did. Parker what? Campbell is a sister? What? She said, I am with Community Relations at the Beckington Group. I, skip, I get skid done. 
right. and I'm on whoever side that's winning at the time. So she said, oh, you a lobbyist or something like that. Mm -hmm. She said, whosever team is winning, I'm on their team. And y'all are not winning. I said, so that's why I'm not on your team. Like, I said, oh. So I was like, the God. whole time, God, we fighting against us. I said, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good at all. So the girl was like, you know what? Maybe if you cooperate with us, we can work together and we can do something. Because the highway is going to come, Charlie said, first of uh, freaking all, uh, I'm in position to, to, stop. to stop the highway and to be able to have say so in what happens next. She was like, buck all of that. We, who is we? Such and such, send my father in. That guy doing Sam Landry though came around the corner, y'all. That guy throwing Charlie went back like she saw a ghost. She said, She's like, wait a minute. She picked her pocket and was like, you know what, do I need to run? So Sam Landry don't play on Vi. Yup. And he played Charlie. Yup. To get rid of his own so, sister. Yup. And he said, it just looked better for another woman to do it. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm like, Yup. So, she, so he really didn't he give didn't. Aunt Vi the favor. He didn't he give didn't. A, he gave a favor in favor of himself. Yeah. Cause I was like, cause when I thought about it when I saw the part, I was like, you know what? He really could have told her no because of that. I mean, that's over, done with. You know, he's still alive, so he could have went away and, and not even did anything with that. And so told Charlie, you know, I always knew it was a good idea to keep my daughter away from St. Joe. So he has been in contact with his daughter mm -hmm. for many, many, many years yep. and keeping her hidden. So remember when we were all, they were always trying to find out who this Parker was and it was like this person was a ghost? Yeah. Because they were hiding her. Yep. The entire freaking time. So now... Charlie has someone for the very first time, to be honest with you, because the Landry's, they come from just money mm -hmm. and they make things move with money. This chick is educated yeah. with a powerhouse of money behind her. Yep. Charlie is looking in the face oh, of Charlie. Charlie. Yep. And I'm like, this ain't good, y'all. Yeah, this, this ain't this... good. Man. And Charlie left up out of there and she basically told the girl, you don't know me. Yeah. And Parker said, and you, you don't, don't know me. me. She said, my aunt, pretty much my aunt, she may have underestimated you, but I won't make that mistake. Mm. I said, Charlie, go, just leave. leave. Yeah. It's been a mess since you, you, you won. You had yeah. your Barack moment. You the <laughs> one. You the black, the first black person that the one down there. Just take your Barack moment, sit in the seat, make it warm, and get the fuck out. Because this is about to be real strong. You about yeah. to be on some blood pressure pills Yeah. In three, two, one. Yeah, she finna give, yeah. She give about her to give her a run for the money. She, she already said, I'm going to take the land. And I already sent such Wilbur, the, the um, company is down there, to freaking, um, uh, what did you to say? To seize the land. To seize the land already. From Ralph Angel. From Ralph Angel. It's I like, said, here we go. Here we go with the bullshit. Yeah, but like I told you, I said, you know, a lot of times we'd be like, you know, you know, the white man this and the white man that. Sometimes it's us yeah, doing it to time. us. Yep. So we got through that hurdle and we ended off the season with how we began. That's why I was like, powerful. Is this final or what? Like, yeah. what the hell? And they move fast. So. With Prosper's help, we can see now that they located Trudy's grave. Mm -hmm. And those flowers, her favorite flower, were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it was so eerie, but it was so beautiful at the same time. They had got her headstone and got it engraved and everything. I said, boy, y'all move fast. Charlie must pay for that. <laughs> and, um. We don't want to get on headstones. <laughs> Stop, Stop, don't do it. I ain't never gonna do it. I don't want to fit nobody here that you haven't got your mama or daddy here. So y'all yeah, understand. They still got that plate from the funeral. Yeah. That been kicked around by the lawn. Just, just let you know, you know, you don't have to get the big fancy one. You can get the one that's like twenty five to fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. The little team to block. You can put the name on it and call it a day. Just the don't date. go in debt for it, man. No, but yeah. they don't know. Yeah. So they're all standing by the grave. They're all holding <clears> hands, <throat> and it's everyone, like everyone that is close enough to that family are there to commemor commemorate that moment of actually 
knowing that truth is out there on that land. Mm -hmm. So now it means a whole nother thing to keep that land into the family. Yeah. And not to allow a highway to come through there. But I'm trying to remember, like, I don't remember my laws real, real good. If they know that there's graves at a certain, you know, on the land, can they drive a highway through that land? Uh, I, can't, I can't remember I can't, how I can't it works. Remember. Yeah, I can't remember. But anyway. But in in St. Joe, they, they can, can do, do whatever it. the fuck they want to do. And as we saw. So at the end, we kind of left off with kind of like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this and I'm uh -oh. saying it from the beginning. Charlie, y'all need some heavy artillery, man. Mm -hmm. You need some AR, some 9mm, some Glocks, some swords, some, some bone arrows. Whatever <laughs> you can get. Taser. Because these jokers... It's not going to stop until they get what they want. It's crazy. So y'all might have to take a couple of them jokers out. Starting with Parker Campbell. <laughs> Man. Parker Campbell had a sharp line up on that top lip, boy. I said, God, <laughs> know that she ain't got that lipstick line up. I said, God. I didn't expect for a sister to be behind all this, all this right here. I, yeah. I said, God. Oh, it was a lot. So at the end, we kind of get like this montage of what's going on in everybody's lives right now. And everybody just seems to be happy. You have Raw, Dollar, and Blue. They're teaching Blue how to swim with that Dollar Tree beach ball. <laughs> and because um, y'all know Dollar is a swimmer. So everybody just seems to be in their own lane and they're happy on um, Vi and Hollywood all cuddled up. Then you see Nova and Calvin. They have moved in together because y'all know yeah. we moved back. But we thought he was just going to move back. With his, you know, just him. And have room for his kids. Yeah. No, he, he got a whole lady up in there now. So yep. she's there. And she's writing a book. And she's actually going to take that book and concentrate on her and the stuff she really knows. Yeah. And thank God for that. Yeah. Um, we have hashtag Black Joy. We got Micah and Kiki. They're off mm -hmm. to college. They seem to still be rocking it out, doing well. It's freshman year. Keep your eye on that. And then Charlie. Charlie gets her official portrait for being yeah. councilwoman. Yeah. And in that picture, she looked like she about to bump, bump some, some skin up. up. Yeah, man. I said, well, did you take that picture before or after you met Parker <laughs> Campbell? Because I'm scared for you, um, Charlie, but I know you're going to give her a run for you. For oh, a yeah. Now. Oh, yeah. She done, dealt, she done dealt with some people like Parker Campbell, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the only thing that would have been so good to close out with was we should have seen Prosper and Miss Genevieve all hugged up with mm -hmm. each other on the sofa. They said next season. Five, Man, right? they said next watch season. It. Season five, they gonna give it to you. Five, Man, right? watching, uh, watching good times. Yeah, something. They ain't do us like that though. But yeah. um, that's the season finale, y'all. It was good. Yeah, it was, it good. was really good. So we gonna see y'all next season. We'll be back straight dirty, from VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.